I take offense. <laughs> All right. Uh, I'm waiting for the stream to pop up. Go like a I just got a notification on the watch. That's pretty Shit. cool. Shit. Yeah. Watch tells you everything. Watch tells me all the things. I answered a call on the watch today. That's yeah. It's really weird because you have to do this. <laughs> oh, it actually uh, has a mic? Yeah, it has a mic on it. I thought I would answer it. And then uh, Glenn called. And I thought I would answer it and be able to go pick up my phone and just use my phone. But I'm like, hello? And I heard it very low. I'm like, hello? <laughs> and he was actually coming through here. So I had to like talk like this. Just like Dick Tracy. Yeah. Yeah. All right, I'm going to refresh the page. And then you have stuff that shoots out of your watch, too. I wish. Sleep dart something. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. If only. If only I could be so lucky. All right, stream's up. Uh, I'm going to pause that on my end. Whatever. Okay, so. Hello. Hello. Everybody. Hello. Welcome to... Uh, podcast version uh, 0 0.2. I am your co host, uh, professional dungeon master, uh, knower of all things Wizards of the Coast and Magic the Gathering, uh, more than Harrison. <laughs> Have you ever played Magic? I don't think you've ever played in your life. <laughs> the, but you the, know it. I use you know the, everything I like, about my it. My favorite card is the, the blue eyes white dragon card. <laughs> <laughs> That's my favorite card. Uh, over there to my right, your right, my left, uh, Harrison, over there. Hi. Mm. Camera's down, in a different spot. Down below, Ryan is down Hello. here. Well, if you, if you look at the stream, it's, it's correct. So, we're here tonight to educate you. Uh, dominate. Dominate you many things with you um we're gonna go over the uh one of the more recent arcanas that were released and then talk a little bit about D, &D stuff <coughs> maybe and a little if little, we feel like it a little about life a little about love uh so yeah harrison kick us off with our first <clears throat> uh email of the day E email okay email arcana. um the arcana, arcana yes. there, yeah. there we go <laughs> okay <clears throat> so as let's say with last week we were going to talk about an arcana was released recently this one we're going to do is traps it's uh traps revisited so they kind of go in more in depth on how traps are how they expect them to be ran possible new ways to do it versus just the simple i you find a trap and it springs and hits you and kind of the, the nice con uh, complex and or uh, simple, uh, less simple, but more simple instead of well, like spikes at the door. Right. <laughs> or the, like the, the biggest one is like you open a door and a trap goes off yeah. or type of thing. So that that's kind of a common idea is to go, and open a door and just have a trap go off. But that's they, they're kind of trying to give new ideas of what traps are, what they can do, how they can kind of get you, how you can set up your own, how you should run yeah, them. Overall, it's like it's just a simpler version for setting up traps, traps as a DM. Yeah, it's, it's very DM-driven, this one. Maybe only so, DM-driven, really. Yeah, yeah. I mean, instead of... <laughs> instead of having multiple types of traps ultimately they just had the simple traps and then the complex traps yeah yeah which is nice especially as the dm because I, I don't know I, one of the things i've found especially with traps is it's hard to like especially with players who uh like to complain it's hard <laughs> to set off a trap and they're like well i, I would have been looking out it's like well your passive perceptions three so you really didn't see it and you just kind of walk in, like. Well, that was one of the things that I like that they showed on how the players should be specific about how they want to attack or approach the trap, and suggesting that they be more specific about how they say what they're doing. I mean, I like that as part of this. Instead of it's, just generally, I check door for trap. Yeah, more you're of like, like I want to check the keyhole 
and fill yeah. around the edges of the door or something. This right. Yeah. Well, especially with like the simple traps and stuff, it, I don't know. It, it's it's so hard to take a a uh, a player character and like not e- either you give it away by being all right, everybody roll perception or. Yeah. You you give them like the sense of they didn't have a chance, right? So, yeah, they and, yeah they were talking about that as well. Yeah, and so it's kind of trying to find that balance, and it's yeah. nice that they give an example of, well, make sure your your player characters are saying, you know, what they want to do, and like my favorite line is, a player can't just say, "I use thieve tools to disable it," because <laughs> I feel like that would just be like a go to, be like, "I'm a thief, I can just disable it." And yeah. it, it's never that like a that's not fun and b it's never that simple and it's more creative when uh they come up with their things i think i was playing with you ryan and yeah didn't we get stuck under a boulder or something and somebody figured out to put water in the cracks of the boulder and then they like froze it and oh, yeah. cracked it <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah using science yeah, was- to your advantage science. yeah exactly yeah, that's what they were also talking about. This is just being open minded to how they might approach whatever this scenario is, whatever trap you had. Yep. And leaving yeah. the ability to do so. I mean, I feel like that's when you play with people, um, especially who don't play D&D that much, or maybe um, they're just not quite that open minded. Yes, I feel like sometimes they, uh, they'll go through and they forget that they're controlling a character that doesn't know. You know, they just assume the game's being played for them almost. Well, Which yeah, there's there's it. a lot of, like, <clears throat> there's a lot of, you you don't, like, the simplest things that you don't think about, like, yeah. in a video game, like, walking or jumping or something, you, you don't tell somebody you're jumping. And, like, <laughs> like when you're playing, a, uh, like, especially an MMO, I know I, personally, when I'm running around, I jump just constantly. It's like a thing. And so, like, in my <laughs> mind, that's how people move. Right. It's like run, like you're always running or you're always sprinting and like well are you walking are you quietly walking are you sprinting are you fast you know what I mean like the DM doesn't know these things yeah and there's that level of awareness people need to tell the DM that they don't uh, yeah that's it's always fun to hear well I wasn't doing that <laughs> yeah exactly like uh okay well when did that change <laughs> but yeah. So, um, just moving forward on this, uh, they discuss the simple traps and how they're kind of laid out. And the simple traps, from my understanding, you guys can correct me, were just yeah. one-off type traps that would pop, either hit you or don't hit you, and then we're done. Yeah, that's that's kind of how I read it. As like they're they're the um, the more common traps that you think of when you think of a trap in D and D. Sure. Yeah. Um. And so, so they, they kind of gave examples, and it's nice how they, they, they broke it down into different levels of severity. Yeah. So that you can kind of gauge if you have a level one character, you're not going to throw a, you know, danger 20 thing at them. Yeah, like some <laughs> scything blades at them or something. Just going to tear yeah, their limbs slice apart. Them right in half, yep. <laughs> <laughs> you did. Oh, your leg. I'm sorry, your leg's over there now. <laughs> <laughs> I walk on my hands. Uh, well, then you have no arms. <laughs> um, but yeah, the, the, one of the ones that I read that I thought was a, a good example of how they explain countermeasures too, which we were talking about, where they come up with like different ways, was uh, definitely the the uh, fiery blast one, where it shows uh, where it's essentially a cone of flames comes out, and they give uh, several different ways to countermeasure it, just like. Not even including what other people come up with, but like you can like reveal ash and faintly burnt marks on the ground, or like if you have a good religion check, you can like tell that this keystone's important to this trap for this you know entity, and like all of them are built this way type thing. I, I definitely would not have thought of you know like oh well, a history a religion check could definitely disarm a trap sure. <laughs> like that that never would have come across my mind personally. So, yeah, I agree. Yeah. And that that depends on your party makeup too, because I would not bet or wager anything that our group would ever find <laughs> anything <laughs> like that. Is, I don't. I, I love really them, good. but I don't think they 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 play on on that level of almost complex thinking for D anD. d Sure. 
Yeah, it's. But I mean, that, that's kind of getting into it. It's hard to think of that way, and it's kind of letting your players know that maybe there's more than one way to disarm a trap than just saying I'm going to disarm this trap. Okay. Like you push one of your friends onto the spike and walk over him. Push well beyond <laughs> it. Easy peasy. <laughs> He's too small. I won't cover the whole thing. <laughs> um, but yeah, that, that's kind of the, the simple traps. And they give several examples, which is nice. And you can take some of them. Use them <laughs> as your own. I made this. Yep. And then they, they give a kind of examples of how to make your own traps and what good ones are in that and kind of the throws. That's something that I didn't think about is traps actually attack. I, I I would not have thought of that. Like traps attack you; they don't just hit. Sure. Like some of them have saving throws uh, during the lock pick phase or whatever you're doing. Yeah, but they get like an attack bonus. I just didn't. I figured that you made a spell or a DC check, and if you succeeded, you you succeed. But they actually get to attack you too. Like it. There's a turn for them. Well, not yet. That, that's the advanced traps. I'm saying even for the like simple traps, they they have, they they have an attack. It's weird. It, it's sure. it's a it's just a weird like they have an attack bonus. So like if it's say a uh, a crossbow trap, for example, mm-hmm. I think it's on that one, like it'll still shoot the crossbow at you. So if you have a really high AC, you could still just deflect it simply based off of your AC. Right. Which I, I again, yeah. you don't think about like, well, you're like, oh, it's a trap, it's gonna hit you. But if you have armor that can't even get pierced by a said crossbow, said crossbow, then it wouldn't even matter. So, just more more little things that you don't really think about when you think about traps. Yes. I just really want to make a deadly trap, the most complex trap. I feel like you would do <laughs> complex stuff for us, and then we'd all just die. <laughs> no, uh, okay, so moving on to complex <laughs> traps. Because one of them is. So I was reading, I was like, oh, this seems, you know, and then I read the end. And I'll explain why the end made it so much worse. Um, but so complex traps are kind of. Are, are the idea of a trap that's continuous. So I, I always go back to like a movie where they're trying to get like the idol at the end of a long hallway and like there's spinning blades and they have to like dive through the so spinning blades. Yeah. Like, and there's just constantly going like if, if a blade was spinning, it's not going to stop spinning. It's just going to constantly be there. So it, it, it never goes away. It never stops being a trap. All right. As opposed to the bear trap that shuts once or the crossbow that just runs out of arrows or whatever. Yeah, they have to just keep going, going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The, the the path of blades is the one that I was reading, and it's a hundred and thirty foot, um, one hundred and sixty foot long hallway. At the first eighty f- feet are spinning blades of death. At the last, at the next fifty feet are crushing pillars of death. Everything's of death. I've decided. <laughs> but my favorite part is at the last, at the very end. For the final 30 feet, there's a rune of fear. So not only after you get through all this, you get to the very end, and then all of a sudden you're like, oh, by the way, you're feared. You have to run away and back yeah. through all that shit that you just came through. Yep. Like, that's just, that's evil. Yeah, that one's brutal. <laughs> Mostly because you'd be like, all right, cool, I got through. And right, yeah, like, I finally did roll, it. Roll this, uh, uh, you need to roll a um, <laughs> wisdom saving throw. <laughs> the trap challenges you to a riddle. <laughs> <laughs> what am I? Your worst nightmare. Mm. Then bats fly out. Um, it's pretty scary. Yeah. Uh, so basically, that's for complex traps. Uh, one of the different things for complex traps, though, is as we said, they're continuous. They have their own initiative. Yep. So they, they they go on said turn round. So either uh, in this case twenty or ten, or if it's very fast, twenty and ten. It's a fast trap. So, yeah, exactly. You get hit six times. Um, but yeah, that that's kind of the 
the difference between the two, and I, I wouldn't even consider this a trap. I would just consider this a room. But a I gauntlet I, to get through. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to the gauntlet. Ultimate Ninja Warrior. We'll set that up for our next game. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you want to see everyone die, or then... we do something American Gladiator style. Hmm. Uh, Ryan, actually, one of the first ones we did had American Gladiator style where. <laughs> <laughs> That that thing was intense and hard to visualize. Mm-hmm. But uh, traps. I'm I'm just making sure. Um, but as with the uh, the simple traps, the complex traps. I you just the the thing that I find the most interesting is the different ways to get around it. Like they, they, if you come up with a way to disable like the statues or something, or like you find a you you're super strong you can move a rock in the way of the crushing thing and it stops it you know it can't crush you 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 don't think of eh, and players don't necessarily think that they can do that i think that's one of the things that is hard to get across is you can always try to do something right it's just especially hard for newer players to realize anything is possible anything is possible you need a rainbow when you say that Next time. But yeah, that, that's. Anyway, traps. Is there... traps. Traps. Hey, traps. Trap cards. <laughs> we did not trigger a trap card, no. See? I know so. I know magic. <laughs> magic definitely <laughs> doesn't have trap cards. I don't know. Everything you've described has been Yu Gi Oh! Yeah. <laughs> Everything. I don't know. All of it. Not even a little bit. Um, so that that's traps. Um, again, this is the Arcana. Um, Wizards of the Coast released them quite often. Um, well, recently, they've been list, uh, releasing them often. They used to not be as frequent before. The Mystic was the latest one that got released, and that thing is OP as fuck. I haven't even gotten through yeah. a majority 20, of it. So. 22 page Arcana? Yeah. It's a lot. They're essentially every class in one. So it's interesting. <laughs> <laughs> I need knife. And they're very hard to kill. Probably worse than Welby. Oh. Well, we will die if I have anything to say with it. He will be missed. <laughs> yeah. I can't mute you, or I would, but. um. So, moving on yes. from this, that was our Unearthed Arcana. That was Art. Arcana Talk here on Untitled Podcast version. <laughs> Untitled Podcast version. <laughs> the Coyote. We'll get there. We'll get there. One day we'll be at version one. Bye. Uh, so next we're going to go ahead and transition into, Woo. Woo, yeah, into uh, creating a character where we discuss kind of the ideas of creating character and the steps for going through it, kind of the things that you fall into, why you read and pick the things you do. Um, last time we uh, definitely discussed rolling and kind of how you The different roll your types dice. of yeah, rolls you can do for stats. Yeah. So um, this time we're gonna go ahead and go into races. I don't think we talked about races last time, did we? Uh, no, we, we did not. So let me grab beta. My where's my book? I'll be back in a moment. I'm gonna grab my book. He nerd needs his book. Um. Crack, 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 He's still gone. Anyways, while he's gone, I uh, probably set up some of those traps where his book was. Huh? I wish I could have. That would have been fantastic. But it would have had to been a simple trap. I don't think he has enough space <laughs> in his house to put up complex <laughs> ones. <laughs> just have a, a this, trap. This is this is my room. This is my complex trap room. <laughs> this is where I just build. Why do you have a hundred and eighty foot addition on the back of your house? Complex trap room. Every house has to have one. 
Uh, so yeah, this uh, Ryan has not played Five E. I will preface with mm-hmm. that. So he's not not going to be as uh, knowledgeable on the races, but what? he has played D and D. I was just describing that Ryan has not played Five E. I have not. That is a player's handbook. I see. Make it shine, baby. Make it shine. I can't show you the rest. If I show you the rest, we'd have to pay legal fees. Oh, no. <laughs> so you want to go over races? Is that what? Or race plus class? What would um, you pick first when you're building your character? Will you go after your race first or class first? See, I always found that weird. They made Chapter 3 class. But I guess it depends on, again, if you're, if you're going to build towards the min-max way or if you're just picking for, you know, like a story. I think if you're going the min-max sure. way, you're going to be looking at everything at the class. same time. Well, yeah. I I would say class first if I'm if I was going to be just worried about stats because you the bonuses you get from the race to class kind of matter. But well, I feel like it's yeah. play style. Yeah. yeah, which is that's what we uh, discussed last time is play style and how sure. you you essentially just have to if you're going to play where you're playing a character and you don't care if you're the best in the world at that character in the sense of like your stats don't have to be maxed to 20 for decks if you're a rogue type thing then you can just kind of go and pick whichever race you would want versus yeah. if you're trying to max out and you know you want your bow to do uh, a thousand jillion damage on turn one with your 16 uh, attacks and uh, you know other billion other things. Sure. You you, you definitely so want to look at. Are you like Glenn or are you like <laughs> the rest of the normal people? There's actually. Do you want to be pretty or do you want to kill stuff or do you want to be pretty while you kill stuff? Oh. That's not possible. Don't no. lie to the people. Well, Sorry, Loretta has I some good rolls get... yesterday. That can happen. It can, it can happen. <laughs> she had some very good rolls. Uh, so I I would say. I recently have found myself picking race before class just because I kind of have an idea of what class I want to be. So you picked class first? Huh? Well, yeah, I guess. <laughs> I think what you're trying to say is min maxers pick a class first and then race second. And true role players of the D&D realm pick race first and then class. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I, I would agree. So we, I'd say we just go over race and kind of look at those no stinking tiefling. All right. I don't know why you have such hatred for tieflings. Gonna be a kender. I don't even know what that is. Is that one of the ones from the new thing? It was an old shitty race from D and D. Oh. I don't know. I don't memorize these things as well. I, as you. I ain't memorizing nothing. This brings up some race from. 30 years ago. They were like kleptomaniacs uh, that stole from their party and was just a shitty class to play if they played the class. Um, I'll send you info on it later. Someone had this funny little image macro with all this text on there on the Kender race page and it was, it was pretty good. Now I have to find it and I'll share it with you. And race can, wars? It's long though so you're not going to be able to read it during the podcast. Don't do that. So, what's first up? Uh, first up, dwarf. Pretty self-explanatory. Give us your best dwarf accent. No, because it always comes out Russian. <laughs> <laughs> Strong just, like a bear. Yeah, pretty much. Or, or, or I have to say like toss me. <laughs> toss me. That's the, that's the I... only way to. That's the only way to get into the dwarf accent is toss me. I'm your shooter. I, don't know. I can't do dwarfs that well. I can't go beyond like a few words, then it just turns to like Indian or something. <laughs> but, yeah, I don't know what Tech support. Just... Almost all my my voices slowly lead to an Indian voice. All right, so <laughs> everything slowly. So dwarves are, <laughs> for lack of a better explanation, short and stout, as the big bold letters say. Here is my. Hand. 
<laughs> I don't, don't know what you're talking about, but all right. Um, oh, what? Did what you not have about? a childhood? He did not. He was never a child. No. <laughs> <laughs> he not. Thanks. Thanks. It's the I'm a little teapot song. You never yeah. I, I, I understand. Oh, I get you just, it. You just didn't want to have fun. No, fun's not allowed. What is this fun you speak of? Yeah. Never again. Ever. Ah. Uh, so short and stout. Uh, I don't know. Whenever I picture yeah. dwarf, I just kind of picture like Gimli. the hairy, yeah, Gimli, the hairiest, <laughs> like short little thing. But you have a female dwarf. That is the picture, but they are also hairy, from what I understand. <laughs> Some of them do have. I think in EverQuest you can put a beard on your dwarf in EverQuest. <laughs> Milady. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so much like other races, they do have sub races. So dwarf has a sub race of. Uh, they have the mountain, I believe. Are you looking it up? They have yes, hill. They and have hill mountain. and mountain. Yeah. Yeah. So they I have sub races. You, since you're oh. like, I don't need no book. <laughs> no, I have the book up as a PDF. <gasps> I just meant I don't need no. Paper book. We don't endorse any piracy of any kind on Dynamic Gorilla. Dynamic Gorilla LLC has no affiliation with Harrison or his wrongdoings on his spare time. How is it piracy? You downloaded they, the book without buying it. You, you can buy it in the PDF form, can't you? Nope. You don't even know, so don't even bring it. <laughs> you take so don't piracy. act like you did it. <laughs> no, I didn't buy it. I'm just saying. Why well, I don't get it? I bought it. It was the only one they made. And they gave me the only copy. I feel like for how like specific it is on the bookmarks, it's either somebody spent yeah, a lot of time or the someone spent a lot of time, and the scans aren't the best. Like if they were to release the true PDF, you wouldn't see page folds and bend spine images in the PDF. I don't see those things. You're not looking I hard don't... enough. Apparently not. You just like to steal from companies. That's all right. Yeah, that's it. Uh, like seven of us own the book. I'm not even gonna. So. No, not seven. I have it. Lorda has it. Tony has it. Justin has it. Does he? He bought you that fancy he version. Bought, he, that was Volo's guide, not the player's handbook. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, I think there's only three. Brad there. has it. Does Brad it? has it. I know for a fact okay. Brad has it. There you go. Four. So. All right, anyway, so dwarf, sub race, mountain, and hill. So, Uh, those are the two things. They're they're pretty similar. Not a a too crazy difference. Uh, Just stat gains a little bit different. But other than that, not not too crazy different. Um, Moving on to the next one Elf. Which I can't imagine is much different in any. Like, so all in all, all these classes are, are races are not much different, of course, according yeah. to Harrison. They're pretty much the same. So pick whatever, whichever one you want. <laughs> Segment's over. I, I meant they're not much different than elves that you think of. <laughs> but all right, they're pretty. You they're, know, you could. You can play whatever you want. Don't be. Don't be. Like suckered into the. You have to pick the best class for the best race. You have to. If you play barbarian, you have to pick half orc. So, yeah, yeah. I don't Just know saying. why people think that. No, know. that's every elf I've ever known. <laughs> Shit, barbarian elves. It's a. There should just be like a whole like horde of them. Yep. Can they even get bigger than like 110 pounds? Or, nope. <laughs> but they can live for like 200 years. Yep. <laughs> that's pretty good. They could do a lot. Barbarians usually die pretty quick, but they don't <laughs> yeah. Well. So, if you're a barbarian elf. It could be a long rain. Yes, it would. A long rain over people you can't actually beat up. <laughs> you just be that. You be that elf that everyone's like, "Oh yeah, he thinks he's a barbarian." Just go along with it. Just, le- just let him just keep hitting you. He's special. So if you're elf, he cannot be barbarian. <laughs> but uh, so yeah, elves are kind of more the magical. There is uh, two different race sub races. Uh, half or high elf, excuse me, uh, wood elf and dark elf. So three. 
Three. I'm wrong. And dark elf is that supposed to be the drow? Yeah, it's a it drow. actually says yeah. dark elf parentheses drow. Yeah. Uh, so mo- most of them are pretty, uh, pretty similar in as far as the uh, stats go outside of the sub races. Yeah, uh, as you would see, probably huh? kind of hard to talk about races if they're all not against you, but they're all kind of just your flavor. Well, yeah, that's choice. exactly it. I mean, like, just like he said, if you yeah. start with races before class, I mean, it's like you're picking your lineage story, whatever you want to say. Right. I feel like picking mountain or hill dwarf is, you know, still picking your lineage, not necessarily min and maxing. Unless yeah, you're Glenn, yeah, for then sure. it definitely matters. But otherwise, no. To the normal player, <laughs> sure. they're just going to pick. I want to be from the hills. I am a dwarf that's afraid of large mountains. So there you go. You have your... So you came from a hill? Story. You're like, I can do I can do hills, but I can't do mountains. Fuck mountains, man. That's, that's too high. That's way too high. Um, Don't go high on the mountains. They dig the beneath. You I know think- nothing of dwarves. I think once we start touching on classes, that could almost start leading to touch back a little bit on races instead. Cause I, think- I mean, I feel like sometimes with the, uh, depending on how the DMing goes or how the campaign wants to go, picking your race can sometimes determine what kind of skill sets you might get. Like you might have more skill sets that aren't necessarily accessible to your race, but because you lived in the mountains instead of the, done the caves, I mean, you might say, I have this, can I have this extra skill or whatever, you know. Yeah. Well, but yeah. It could give a little extra, not just flavor, per se. Well, it, it, and it goes to the whole like, if you grew up in a mountain your entire life, you may be able to be like, well, I don't feel like I'd be lost in in caves as easily. You know. Or, what I mean? or you could have like you have a uh, a gnome that's lived his whole life with the dwarfs underground, so maybe sure. you can give that gnome some sort of dark vision because yeah, he probably exactly. adapted to mountain life. I think it's small things like that. Yeah. Yeah. In my mind, there's this backstory now where this gnome got kidnapped as a small child, <laughs> was raised by a, a bearded lady dwarf. A gnome that talks uh, with an accent like a dwarf? <laughs> <laughs> I just, just can't even do with the accent. Yeah, ex- Shit, I am confused. I'm confused yeah, now. I don't accent. even know what's... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so uh, we'll yeah. just we'll jump through the races real quick. Halflings, small little guys. Uh, Much two, like the hobbits from Lord of the Rings. Yep, so very very close. Same thing. Uh, two different sub races: Lightfoots and Stouts. Again, just small differences, nothing big. Humans. Now humans are the kind of the jack of all trade type ones. So wait, did you say a stout halfling? Yeah. Stout halfling. Is that like a mini dwarf? Like a mini mini dwarf? I don't know. Maybe what we should ask our, our stout <laughs> halfling. Yeah, it's it's uh, as a stout halfling, you're hardier than average and have some resistance to poison. So yeah, essentially you are a uh, you're, you're a like, dwarf. You're, you're, like you're dwarfish. Yeah, you're dwarf. You're a dwarf. Dwarf. Yeah. Dwarf like. <laughs> some say that stouts have dwarven blood. There you go. <laughs> I'll add that. Now, does that mean that a dwarf slept with the... No, just kidding. Uh... You can have a half-halfling. Half-halfling? Yeah. <laughs> Quarter, like quarterly? Middle ground? Middle, middle. I would like to have a halfling that is half, half-orc. Medium. Oh. Half-orc. That's, yeah, that's weird. <laughs> so he means jack-of-all-trades. In, uh, the, in so it's the... like a quarter. He's, he's, yeah. he's a quarter. In the Dungeon Master's Guide, there's actually a section in there that talks about mixing races like that. So if you did want some sort of half whatever, you can legit do that in here. And of course, just talk with the DM and adjust points or wherever accordingly, and you can make your own half race. I would like a half dragonborn, half halfling. A dragonling. Just, just, a, just a little dragon guy yeah. running around. Small, adorable, little. Dragonborn. Yeah. Yep. That's my plan. Uh, humans. Humans are, are boring. Yeah. They're, they're good at everything. They, they really are. But they're, they're not just, the best. At it. No. Jack of all no, trades. They're, they're, yeah. 
Master. Dragonborn yeah. traits. Yep. Uh, Dragonborn, as we were discussing. Dragon-looking guys. Uh, fairly, fairly good at... Uh... God, why, why am I blanking? They they get their own built-in trait as well too, which is their yeah. uh, their dragon breath or breath weapon, uh, and then depending on what sort of ancestry you pick for the dragonborn, you get a different type of uh, damage type. So it ranges from like acid, lightning, fire, uh, poison, cold, hmm. and you can have those different types depending on what uh, what the ancestry you pick, which is pretty cool. An extra little attack just built right in for any dragonborn of any class. Yeah, and um, what's neat too is you can either have like a cone or a straight line. So it's either like an acid spit, in my mind, like a straight line, just whoosh, or like you're breathing fire. So I just, I don't know. Eh, I would always want to breathe fire. I feel like that would be more dragony. Typical. Yeah. Breathe acid, spitting on people. It reminds me too much of Reptile from, like, yeah. Mortal Kombat. <laughs> We're just like, there they go. I'm a little lizard. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> <laughs> Onwards uh, to gnomes, maybe. L- little gnomes, little guys. Uh, are these halflings or gnomes? What? Gnomes? <laughs> Nothing. We have Here's a your halfling. Question. We have a halfling in our game who we just keep calling a gnome. He's pretty much he's a gnome. <laughs> he thinks he's a halfling, but I, don't know. <laughs> I, I know better. He it's picked like the lowest say- height for a halfling too. He's like at exactly three feet. And I'm like, what? Like, don't, don't become the size of a gnome and they get mad when people confuse you with a gnome. Like, don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> I just. <laughs> Just send him to Ancestry.com. Find out if he's great <laughs> elf. Get his back lineage. I don't know the exact height that a gnome could get. Now I'm curious. Gnomes are between 3 and 4 feet tall. And average about 40 pounds. See, he's shorter than an average gnome than getting, <laughs> getting mad at us that we call him a gnome. You never think about how small they are. Like, they are a small size. Huh. Yeah, and size is tough in the game, too, because, like, you can see, like, with last night with the hill giant. In my mind... <laughs> yeah. 30 gi- feet tall. In, that, in my mind, he's as tall as, like, you know, a uh, light, light post, like, outside on the side of the road. Like, I imagine that is a big giant. But in the book, he's, like, 10 feet tall. I'm like, that's just a tall dude. That ain't, like... <laughs> so yeah, like a giant. Just a tall dude. You're just some tall guy. If you saw a ten foot person, you'd be terrified. Uh, I mean, like Shaq is like seven <laughs> foot. You know, like <laughs> I'd be like, all right, tall dude. I can outrun you, or you know, whatever. So maybe he was a half gnome, half. Uh, Not half the one giant. you fought last night. No, 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 the one we fought last night apparently drank some sort of potion. That made him three times. Also, too, he was thirty feet tall because your DM said he was thirty feet tall. So you fought a thirty foot tall giant. We thought <laughs> an Altoids can, okay, and it was delicious. Don't man, you see, you're just breaking the magic now. That's what you're doing. <laughs> uh, let's see. So yeah, gnomes super short. Who's the tallest yeah. here? For gnomes, three to four feet. No, no, who's just the tallest race? Half orc oh. looks like half orc is starts at four foot ten and then they, they can go up to a max of I believe elves are the tallest. I will No. Look. Elves start at four foot six and could go up a max of two D ten. Half orcs start at four ten and can have a max of two D ten added to that. So another twenty up to twenty inches more on top of their height, so with some tall yeah, bitches, they yeah, better get, get down the six, cookies. About six feet, something. So, uh, you know, it's name of the game is everyone has fun, and then if everyone does, and then you win, and that's how you win at D anD. D. Dun 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 dun. That was very confusing, but okay. <laughs> when you, uh, when everybody wins, you win. Bless you all. Uh, I'm what. Yeah. You're not right, wrong. Next, next race. Uh, half elf. 
which in my mind is half elf, half human. That would I be the think, case, yes. I think that's what they were going for. No, that's what they are. Half elf, half, so. half human. The halvesies is what we call them. Have, yeah. What the so I read that they or I had a half elf and I was reading the backstory on them. They have like a little snippet out that's hilarious to me. It says many half elves learn at an early age to get along with everyone, diffusing hostile situations and finding common ground. <laughs> like what? <laughs> that seems like the most. Like they are the zenyatas of D and D. Like it, it just it seems so. Like, hey, everybody, why don't we get along? Like, they're hippies. Yeah. They gotta much. learn to be that way. You gotta learn to be that way? It's really ugly for them. <laughs> the elves call them half-bloods. Yeah. <laughs> Humans just... <laughs> There's a sub, Blood like... Bloods. Okay. <laughs> they just spit on them. Yeah. yeah. Unless they're really nice about it. That's the only thing. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I, I was, oh, I was a little warm. Don't worry about it. I'll clean it up. <laughs> I was a little warm. I just wanted that, that cooled <laughs> me off. Thanks. Do you, do you mind if I, I eat that trash right there? Oh, you do? Okay. I'll just go back over to my box. Don't worry. Everything's good. <laughs> <laughs> just an elf walking around and smacking them. Where is this descending into? That's how my mind goes. If you okay, so do you think if a half elf is in an elven village that they just like ignore him? Yeah. Like it's disgusting. It's just disg- <laughs> they're a freak of nature. Yeah. Well, in the Hobbit, I'd be expelled. In the Hobbit, wasn't that elf chick in love with that half thing or whatever? I don't remember. <laughs> You're on your own on that one. Maybe a human. None of you watched that movie? I watched the first Hobbit. I've not seen the rest of the Hobbits. Wow, really? That's somewhat impressive. No. Well, anyways, half elves are surpri- they're they're very good uh like like I was saying, entertainers. They get along with everyone, that type of thing. They have a high charisma buff. So it helps them. They be smile more charismatic. at you. They give uh, you the thumbs up. Yep. So. Although it's better to make them psychotic. They're pretty magic resistant, uh, as well. So. It's pretty good. They're a good. I feel race. like a human. It's because you didn't know what you wanted to be. Yes. I feel it. Because everything else has really something unique going for it. No, you pick a human because you read online. You read online that if you pick a human, you can have three attacks by turn, by level one. That's (laughs) why you pick a fucking human. And then come the end of the game, uh, you're still low. I had three attacks level one. I carried us. And I have three attacks now level 20, and that's it. (laughs) Uh, Next is half orc. Orc, orc, orc. Orc, 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 orc. I just, I always wonder why, like, if you're full orc, evil. Like, you're bad. You can't play, like, a full orc, right? You can. It's in Volo's guide now. Oh, it is? Yeah. Uh, well, Actually, let me okay. roll over and grab that while you, you chitter chatter, because that it, might be interesting to go over. Uh, in, in, uh, the. Oh, sweet Jesus, what just happened? So basically, in the uh, in the guide, the half orcs. I don't know. It's just weird to me that like being half of an orc is okay, but if you go full orc, you can't play it, according to the, obviously the player's handbook guide. But uh, it's just it's it's so weird. It's so weird to me that you can't that they like initially were like, no, no, you cannot, you cannot play full orc, but half orc. Just having that little bit of human inside you, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> just having a little human inside you. They just weren't going to work well yeah. with others if they're full orc. <laughs> they, I don't think they work well with others if they're half orc. I feel like they're, they're just bad. Yeah. They're just evil in, in certain ways. Yeah. Uh, it's like they wanted to get 
the power of the orc, but not the personality. <laughs> the power of the orc, but without the... Yeah, I guess. Well, because they're kind of like the exact opposite of the half... Like, the half-elf decided, you know what? I want to make everybody happy. And then the full... Or the half-orc's like, fuck you all. I'm just going to kill everything. I don't <laughs> right. kill anything about anybody. It's it's just it's such a weird, like, concept that some of them are okay. Some of them are uh, not okay. Or, like, half being half of one thing. I don't know. It's weird. Yeah. Uh... But I guess that kind of lends to itself like tieflings, which is the next race. They're, they're necessarily not good. And so it would be hard for them to get along with a group. I guess if you pick like a half orc or a tiefling, it'd be hard for you to get along with the group either way. Right. Yeah, so. That's why when we were playing our campaign, I was highly suggesting against people rolling that. So they kind of have an understanding why I was like, maybe not a half orc or a tiefling that's going to kind of ruin. Ruin your day, possibly where we're going. So, well, it, it takes a lot to play those characters. Like, you really have to know how to play those characters. Yeah. Uh, like, you, you can't just go into it with a teeth. Like, uh, Tony did a pretty good job with the teeth thing. Yeah. Like, y- you have to know how to do it. You have to know how to play that character because you're not even unless you have like the most massive charisma ever, and you're constantly hiding your teeth thing. People are gonna hate you. They're going to think you're a devil. Same thing with like the half orc. It's hard to play those. It's hard to move forward with those and keep them, you know, in mind. Right. So that, that's that's pretty. That's kind of the yeah. idea. We didn't get that many trips out there with uh, Estrada when I had my goblin. Oh, yeah, Tony had well, a that... tiefling too. So. Yeah, but he was ninety percent of the time like in, uh, in like clothes. By the way, yes, somehow the trolls have come. Uh, but mods mods are too good. But I, feel like that's, I feel like tieflings are another one where you just have to have a whole, like, your whole party. Squad of tieflings? Yeah. Just, like, roll up. But see, <laughs> that could be fun if you're the DM. If you know they're going to be right. all tieflings, you could almost, you know, they could roll up to a non-hostile town and then all of a sudden just... Sure. <laughs> it's like, oh... Now you a devil. Right. Although that would be awesome. You want to delve into? Oh shit! To Volo. I think we got a. I think we got a whole Volos for another day. There's only a few races in there. It's not that bad. Oh, how many? All right, pull them out. Let's see. Tell, tell them. I'm just gonna. I'm gonna zip over them really fast. All right, zip over them real quick. Oh wow! Calm down. I gotta find Never. it first, man. Never. Gotta find it first. Uh, da, 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 da. All right, well, they're further in the back than I thought they were. Maybe I went too far back. Fill some time there. Yeah, I think half-orcs or tieflings (laughs) are kind of like, uh, just to add drama to your campaign, I feel like, for sure. Yeah. Well, if the person's good with them and plays them correctly, it could definitely... It could play out to be fun if they they play them... You know, if they know that they're going to be, and they're like, well, I'm just going to go sit in the cart, I guess. And I mean, I feel like nothing, nothing can ever just go so simple or so easy if you have one. Whereas yeah. everyone else can, like, fancy their way through things. But... Yeah, there's quite a few in here, so maybe we'll hold off. Because <laughs> there's, like, almost equal amount, if not maybe a few more than actually in the player's <laughs> handbook. So <laughs> You lied to me. I'm sorry. Uh... So yeah, that that I guess that the race really, like you said, classes kind of lend back to them. So yeah, it, it it's a weird like concept to think that you can't you I, you almost have to read through the races and be like, huh? Now that I know all the races, I can go and read the classes. Yeah. So sure. although, do they still have it to where like you cannot play certain classes because you are said race? No, no. They used to I, have that. Yeah, there's no restrictions like that. I mean, obviously, you could always change it however you want. But... Yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, well, I don't like... think I've run into anything yet that even pushes more towards another race than anything else. It's all been fairly mm-hmm. roll whatever you want and play whatever you want. So there's nothing in there that says I can't have like a goblin paladin. They just have their own god that they <laughs> they sure. worship. So 
They all worship the same god. They do. It's like this war chief that like died long ago or something like that. Them orcs or something. I forget. It's all in the Volo's guide. If you're ever interested in reading more, Volo knows all. He does. He knows a lot. Quite a bit. I really do wonder who he is. One day we will find. What Volo? Yes. Oh. Did you read the guide? I read part of it. I haven't read the whole thing. He has his introduction at the beginning. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It tells you who he is, Harrison. <laughs> He's not as important as I think he should so be. He's right there. I know, I got some cops right there. That is very small. Wait, is he the one that's standing like, uh, like, <laughs> uh, yep. where it says bottle of rum? So I'm trying to show it to stream and you guys at the same time. And he actually has both legs right there, too. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Captain Morgan, is that what you're saying? That's what I was going <laughs> yep. for. Yep. That is him, Captain Morgan. You didn't know that was Captain Morgan all the time? Bolo Morgan. Captain Bolo. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody knows Captain Morgan's first name. This was after his yeah. prayer, prayer, by the way. Oh, well. I mean, if it's after, then we can at least forgive it. Like, the leg transplant. <laughs> Like Star, like the uh, Star Fox people who cut off their deepest, yeah. craziest thing. The Star Fox thing, or the Star Fox pilots, cut off their legs and replace them with robotics ones so that they don't uh, have the blood rush to their head from the G forces. <laughs> yep, it's brutal. That's disturbing. Like, man, that Star Fox man to be part of Star That's Fox costs a lot. Yeah. <laughs> no one knows a... commitment. Like, See, but I feel like would you have to cut off Slippy's legs? Because it's not—I don't feel like frogs have a lot of blood in them. I don't know, but Slippy's yeah. screwed anyway. So. Well, yeah, he was pretty bad. Get this guy off me! Yeah, no, nobody's gonna get that shit off you. <laughs> You're gonna fucking die. Nobody wants to get that you cut your legs off for nothing, Slippy. <laughs> <laughs> you made poor choices in life. Yeah. yeah. You were never any good. No one loves you. <laughs> so, uh, speaking of classes, when when we made our campaign with Ryan, uh, one of the things that I never really focused on was class, and kind of the more I realized what it was, the more I kind of decided that it was it was a little more important for your character's backstory. So, speaking of that, what do you mean exactly? How so? Like, uh, if you're a, um, if you're, for example, say a a gnome, y- yeah. your backstory changes a lot, and how you play changes depending on if you're a gnome. Versus if you were, say, a human or some sort of other, you know, type of creature. Um, and uh, like it just never, the first time I played, just never crossed my mind that your your race would matter, besides just stats. Sure. So, uh, transitioning terribly into that, we're going to go into the Ask the Guest. I don't know. We really have zero names oh. for these things. This is beta. <laughs> we're, we're winging it. Wing it. Huh? Fuck it, we're doing live. Um. So, this is where we kind of ask the person that is on the podcast with us, if you're this time, Ryan. That might be me. A question about <laughs> some of the things that they've done in it. And for this time, I am going to ask Ryan kind of he's he's DM'd quite a bit and what are kind of the first things you work on when it comes to a campaign? Where 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 do you start? What are your starting tools? As a DM. As a DM. Um I mean I think the number one thing is having everybody pick what characters they want to be. Because I think the campaign kind of lends itself. I mean, what I'd prefer anyway is to have a campaign based around whoever's playing. Right. That way I kind of have where they want to go or what they want to be or what they want to do or whatever. You know, because I feel like one of the, as a DM, I think the biggest issue is when somebody is like, you know, well, like when you're saying making a character, you have the whole list of skills that you can have, whether you're like climbing or swimming or whatever, right? And then, uh, let's say nobody focuses on swimming, and all of a sudden you're like, "Oh, this is a water world." <laughs> you know, it's like <laughs> it's like really messed up to do yeah. that. You know, it's like now I can't I can't do that. Um, and I feel like there's definitely a lot of uh, 
Uh, other, I mean, that, that skill, the skills list, which I'm guessing you guys will get into eventually, is so long yep. of just options. There's, we, we talked about religion, and who would have thought we could use religion for to get through traps or whatever. Yeah. yeah. And so uh, there's creative ways to do that for sure, but um, I think it sucks when, on the flip side of that, somebody put all their points into swimming and you never did anything with swimming. Yep. Now it's like that person, they like never got to be, who, you know, show off their strength. Right. So, I mean, I think that's the number one thing for sure is just figure out. In their who... house, they have like a gold medal for like swimming. <laughs> every yeah. so often, like they just bring me. Yeah. They just have to show. No one ever asked me about <laughs> swimming. <laughs> Yeah, 2002 Olympics are pretty good, I hear. Yeah. <laughs> I hate this desert continent we're on. <laughs> <laughs> How did you learn to swim? I was rich, okay? Um, yeah, I think a lot, a lot of that comes from, too, is, uh, again, it's, it's on the players as well and how well-versed or willing they are to play their characters out because I know there's yeah. few in our group uh, that pick a bunch of that stuff. Like uh, they would pick a history as their proficiency and want to be this well-read historian um, in the group, but yeah, that just doesn't come up. Because um, also right. sometimes too, I could throw uh, throw them in. A, like I uh, with Tony's character uh, on our first time around. Granted, it was the first time many were playing the game, but I would toss his character into like a um, uh, into a library or a PC or a NPC that they would meet would be in a library and I'm yeah. like, there's books and according to his character's <laughs> background his character was there's a, books according to his character's I background there was a an, an obsession with books he said his character always likes to read oh, okay. whenever he finds a new book he always needs to go read it as soon as he can but throwing him into the situations he never mentions looking for a book or anything like that so it's a little bit of a two-way street there as well, you know, to put all the yeah. effort into the the story of the campaign and the characters are just like blind sure. to it. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, I mean, when I had to make up a lot of the dungeons or whatever, you know, that I would do, it would always... Well, actually, I mean, Harrison kind of remembers. I always made... The dungeons were almost set specifically around what each person had or what they were capable of. Um, so everybody kind of had to use... Well, the yeah. concept. N people never do what you think they're going to do, but well, the that's, concept that's was. the other thing. I, I would always send, yeah, exactly. And I would always like, like I'd make a little dungeon stuff and have like other traps and secret doors and whatever. And you know, then I'd have to be like, well, what if they wanted to do this? And I'd make up like so much stuff. And I just knew as soon as I made it, ninety percent of this is just going to be ignored because they're not going to do it unless I push them towards it in some way. Or, but but at the same time, I can't not have it. Because if right. that's what they wanted to do and they wanted to check it out, then it was there, you know. But yeah. but uh, as I kind of talked about, Harrison, some of that stuff you make, you could transfer to other stuff if they didn't see it yet. You yeah. uh, you know, yeah. you make a new dungeon and you just kind of transfer and the you, ideas. You, so. Of course, don't tell them that at the end of them. No one will ever know. Um, <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. Because I used to have a habit of that and be like, well, you guys just came out of that dungeon. Here's everything you guys missed. And then I'm like, well, there right. goes all my tools for next time. Yeah. So. Yeah, I did. Yeah, I never really did. Although when... Yeah. The one before the campaign that I made with a, a group of six before you played Harrison, like long ago, yeah, I had like a giant campaign that was like literally like a whole campaign of all these different options that were already planned out, like, like even a map. Like the game just had its own map that you went through stuff. And then at one point they even like got to own their own castle because they went and took it over and they could store stuff there from now on and like just like crazy yeah, yeah. too much work. Really, yeah, a lot of work. But too much yeah. work, and to, and then to find out, you know, that they didn't do half of it or whatever. Yeah, there was a. Uh, but it was still cool. There was a whole segment uh, when you guys, Harrison, you were running into the the temple when you found the the flail snail. Oh yeah. Um, <laughs> the first room you go into, <clears throat> where that big lift just took you down, where it's just a lever in the middle, and you guys thought it was a trap, and all you did is just pull the lever. Um, in there, I had, since I'm not really going to use this again, uh, there was four pictures of the family uh, of the ones that were buried in that temple you were going to. So it had, like, stories about each of them on the four walls. Uh, there was, like, a, there was the king, the queen, and then their, both of their sons or something like that on the walls. And I was waiting for somebody in there just to roll an investigation or at least a history check 
to be like, oh, I get to tell them all this cool stuff. And then you guys are like, we pulled the <laughs> lever. I'm like, well, well, there goes that. <laughs> Just disappeared into the sunset. <laughs> <laughs> I set I the painting on fire. Don't you want to? Nope, I want to set the painting on fire. <laughs> <laughs> it's looking at me funny. I do almost feel like there should be some, I don't know, prerequisite. I don't know if you'd call it a dungeon or something like a, like almost a tutorial for some people. I feel like when you play with them, because it's yeah. hard, because it's like you can't you can't teach somebody how to think or how to have awareness <laughs> for things. You know, they just have to have it and they have to be able to try for stuff. Yeah. Can but you it's please like, take this IQ test before you play with me? I need <laughs> to know that there's at least a certain level of uh, right. yeah. intelligence. I think that's where uh, yeah, you also helps with setting expectations before the group goes in there, and you can also tell them like. You know, uh, the kind of thing about playing your character and separating the character from yourself uh, can kind of help get them into the mindset of trying to think of other things and then let, letting them know that, like, you can you can try anything and I'll let you try, you know, like, right. they can say I want to jump straight up to jump to the moon. And even though they roll like a natural 20 doesn't mean they're going to get up there. They just jump a bit right. higher than normal. So. <laughs> You know, like, but at least they tried, and that's what they wanted to do. Right. And you like, grab yeah. a piece of the moon. Sure. Yeah. Tastes yeah. Like cheese. Get cheese. Them in, yeah. Get them into that mindset, and it it helps a lot with getting them to think out of the box for specific things. Sure. The the jumping like... mindset. The what? I feel like some the, the jumping jump mindset. Oh, yeah. Like I said, you jump everywhere you go. Yep. That's how I move my characters in every MMO. Hop along. <laughs> I feel like there's also people play other games you know you play video games where you have weapons like you got the weapon they gave you and that's that and so you know sometimes like during the campaign at one point there was like a group in the kitchen and somebody had lost their weapon they were disarmed and it was like far away at that point yeah so i mean it was one of those things where they could have easily just picked up the kitchen knife that's sitting right next to them. You know, as, as yeah. it was already explained to them how it was laid out, what right. was where, or, you know, you note those things. And they just, you know, they don't think, well, what is the, like, do I see something? You know, is there a <laughs> kitchen yeah. knife? Is there a butcher's knife next to me that I can use? And, you know, they're not skilled with it or whatever. And you could do stuff on the fly. But even that, you know, it's just like, you wouldn't think of it because you just think, well, that's my weapon over there. Yeah, that's you the know, only that's thing I have to use. I can't use anything else. Yeah. Yeah. So. Even though most of the time you're carrying like five different weapons that you know, yeah. you're like, I have two daggers, three swords, oh, but that one's pretty. <laughs> yeah. Um. Yeah. So that's that... a terrible answer to your question because it wasn't exactly a tool. I used. <laughs> <laughs> so you just kind say of. you use one note. All right. There you yeah. Go. I, I just meant more of how do you how do you even start the process? Because I feel like that's kind of one of the big barriers as a DM is like what, how do you, like if, if you're making a campaign, especially say from scratch and not using the book, right. it's hard yeah. to like, what do you do? Where where do you start? How do you move forward? Yeah. Like I mean, I think it's just the characters. I think that you know are going to be in there. Maybe if you can get that information first, yeah. or if if you know what kind of campaign you want to have. Like I said, maybe you want it to just be the entire world is like on fire all the time or what, whatever. <laughs> the, you know, I don't know what kind of world you want exactly, but yeah. um, you know, have an idea for that. And what well, is there an end goal of some sort? You know, just like yeah. uh, to me, I think you know it's not not as simple as like save the princess or whatever, but it's like, are you going to you know? There's a serious wizard in the world that needs to be destroyed or. Whatever. My character is an albino. You have a. A general outline of what this you want this adventure to be, because um, yeah. planning anything above that, your characters are never going to reach that point. Because <laughs> yeah, they're yeah, going to yeah. want to, you're going to want them to go right, and they're going to go left, or they're just going to go straight. Sure. Even though that's not an option, but they somehow figure it out. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's so, why to me yeah. when I did it, it was like picking quests and some of yeah. the campaigns that I did, kind of similar to that, where they kind of have options. Unlimited. Yeah, like with the uh, the first one that we did, they they were like, so I start. It was my first time DMing, and we started with the player's handbook, uh, or not the player's handbook, the uh, starter kit. Road to Fandolin. And it had yeah, Lost Minds of Fandelver was the the whole story quest, 
Um, we did the first cave, which was just this very starting thing. Took us like two, three sessions to get through a small cave. Oh. Small cave. Okay. Um, <laughs> there was probably a total of maybe eight goblins in the cave and one bugbear. Oh, gosh. And it took like that many sessions to get well, through. Okay. It was a, a cluster. A I, fuck doors. Because I'm pretty no sure two. In the cave. Then what was it? Was it a table? No. There was Some no table. inanimate object like <laughs> destroyed me. <laughs> what? Like, I tried to smash a table or something and rolled, like, a critical... I, You're probably I, I don't thinking know. of once you guys left there. I don't know. I did a bunch of stuff, and you almost died, I think, a few times. I, I uh, don't know. But, yeah, after that, like, for some reason, trying to follow pre-made stories was confusing me a lot because I knew that the players needed some sort of freedom of choice. Yeah. And I'm trying to, like, guide them. Like, no, you want to go to Fandolin. You want to go to Fandolin. Take the crates to Fandolin. But they could have easily have just said, no, nah, we go back to Neverwinter, and I just would have been screwed. <laughs> that would have been <laughs> so, I don't want adventure. It was at that I would point rather stay here. where I started learning how to kind of push the characters in a general direction. Sure. Uh, so that's when, like, ogres came out, interrupted their cart ride. Um, Shorty the gnome opened up a portal, and it kind of pushed everyone through this portal. And what helped me a lot first time DMing, which may help others, is I had to switch it to uh, World of Warcraft lore. Because that's Warcraft lore is what I knew. So I'm like, all right, the portal goes to Azeroth. You're in the basement of the Thunderbrew Distillery. Like, all this stuff was almost like Azeroth is, is actually there. And I know these locations because i played for so long. It makes it very sure. easy to... Be like, all right, you're traveling from Dune Marag over to Westfall, or to uh, through the wetlands to Menethil Harbor. You're going to Menethil to Stormwind, and blah 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 blah. So, like, the biggest tool I used when I first started DMing was no use something I knew, and that was World of Warcraft. <laughs> like, it's now with the new stuff that we were making, I just had a general outline of where I wanted the people to go. Sure, kind of pushing that. It's way. just the idea that. You, if you're comfortable as the DM, it makes it more comfortable for the players. I feel like, yeah, because if you if you look like you're if you're having a hard time and you look like you're struggling, the players are gonna start feeling like they're struggling, and it's just gonna cause this whole backlash. And it's just it's you have to have sure. the confidence and never sure let you're... your players see you sweat. <laughs> That's never, <laughs> never do that. I feel like part of the traps we were reading about, they had some of those traps where, like, oh, I don't know if you... Uh, part of that, they had, like, one of the traps where it was, like, they're 100 feet in, and then they hit the switch, and now they cannot escape because yeah. the door is closed behind them. That's one way to get your players, oh, well, sorry, you got to finish this. It's got to be done. You can't I still love my, my favorite trap. That uh, Thankfully, Mike didn't didn't ruin it they spent so long on i just had it it was a trap and by a trap i mean they just had to let the lever get to the top <laughs> oh and they kept pulling it down because they were so afraid i think that's when i was playing barnaby right yeah i think i had barnaby then and yeah i just like stopped them from pulling the lever i think eventually <laughs> i just said why don't we just not pull the lever anymore and let it go up <laughs> my uh the favorite trap that i had was the one that almost tpk the entire group um, Justin, the uh, <clears throat> I forget what temple you were in. Are you were in some some fortress, and there was an elevator. It was a very simple trap. There was three floating elemental simple. like shards, and one was fire, one was ice, one was poison. And I had uh, some sort of instructions, quote unquote, hints uh, on the walls inside that uh, inside that room. So everyone entered the room. There was like six of you. Doors all shut. And there's this, this little elemental thing. And the paper basically says that uh, you can only remove one rune and then the other two will detonate. So if you look at the if you look at the runes, you can see that maybe the fire would cancel out the ice and you could remove safely the poison one. Uh, that basically that was the answer. Uh, so <laughs> Justin, our Let me our just rogue, knock them all together. <laughs> our rogue of all classes in the group goes up to it and just like, I'm going to wipe my hand past it to see if it was like an illusion. Detonates the, uh, I think it was the ice one. And basically everybody got knocked unconscious. 
Red Cookie, <laughs> which was Harrison's character, only survived because prior he killed someone himself and got a bonus to his HP. So he survived <laughs> by like a point or two of life. And that was it. So like if he did not have that buff, everyone would have died just from that quick oh, instance of a... I didn't I just... even plan for that. I was like, oh, this is a fun little trap. Um, but yeah, it <laughs> this <laughs> killed be everybody. Interesting. Yeah, that was my I favorite. Just, I just like the fact that I had that extra health from killing somebody in their sleep, so... <laughs> That's the only way to kill people, man, in their sleep, so they can they can they can dream forever. Yeah. <laughs> Lost in dreams. No more tears. No more tears. Only dreams now. Yep. Oh, good times. All right, so we're we gonna wrap uh, this thing up. Yeah, I think it's a uh, wrap up time. I think. All right. Pretty well. Um. So that's gonna do it for this edition of podcast beta test version point oh two. Version point oh two point oh point oh two oh point two two point oh not two point oh don't listen to that one um <laughs> thank you for watching everybody um uh, thanks or for listening. attending ryan Dan. yeah yeah thanks for having me here um thanks for coming by harrison yeah yeah whatever um view it next week <laughs> tune in next week tune next i week. won't uh, be here yeah next week wednesday you will be in hawaii, hawaii. Uh, so Ooh. if any of you are in hawaii uh Say hello. Sure. <laughs> if you can find me. Sure. <laughs> Say aloha, rather. Um, yeah, we'll be here back here next week. Uh, next week, Wednesday, with another episode of Tales from the Jaws Dragon. Live from my house here, which will be fun. And then um, Thursday, we'll have another podcast, which will also be fun. And then the week after, Harrison will be back. So then everything will be back to normal. Um, it's never normal. It's never normal around here. So thanks, everybody, uh, for watching the chat. Thanks, everybody, for stopping by. Uh-huh. And uh, any parting words from you guys? I've got nothing. I got traps now. I have trap Take ideas now. Yeah, exactly. D- DMs yeah, with the loss for words. All right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, good night, you, everybody. Uh, you die. And uh, yeah, some catchphrase okay. at the end there. So insert catchphrase here.